Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today I'm going to be showing you my 2020 bullet journal, my first bullet journal actually, and how I'm going to be setting up the month of May. I've paused on my cover because I wanted to just talk quickly about what is going on here. So all of these pictures are from magazines and I just cut them out and mod podge them onto the cover and it has held up a lot better than I thought. I wanted to put special sayings on here so it says her 2020 woman of the year and recharge. I just thought that was a really great thing to look at every time I open up my bullet journal and it really embodies what I wanted 2020 to be. So jumping into the first page here, I wanted to embody a little bit of an art deco theme being that it is the 20s again. I don't really enjoy the way that this looks, so I didn't continue that theme throughout. You can see here that I have my full year all planned out right here. This took 20 years to make. <laughs> next, I have all of the important birthdays in my life, and then on the page next to that, I have my personal work and goals for my YouTube channel. The next page here is one that I am not sure that I'll even be able to use this year. And then across from that is my book log where I wanted to just kind of draw out a cute bookshelf and fill in all the books that I have read this year. Um, <laughs> have yet to finish a book this year. No, no, actually I did finish one book at the very beginning of the year, but since then have not been doing a lot of reading, but I did start a book club with my first channel, De La Plants, if you're interested in joining a planty book club. I will have the information for that linked down below. This next page, I have my De La Plants income log, and I have every single month. I actually really, really like the way that these boxes look, and I feel like if I was to be tracking any other expenses in my life, this is probably how I would want it done. Across from that page, I have my sewing log, which is, well, empty. <laughs> This next page is all of my movie tickets. Daniel and I really, really enjoy going to movies, so I thought that I would save all my movie tickets here in this spot. Normally, I save my movie tickets and just put them in a random drawer because I just like having them. I still have my movie tickets from when I saw Twilight in theaters, so... <laughs> this next page is one that I'm not super in love with, so I haven't really developed it too much. It is 2020 in pictures. I did just buy a mini photo printer, so maybe I will be able to put some photos in here. So here is my word of the year and also my quote of the year. And my word of the year is wellness. As you can see here in the subtext, it just says, this is the year of taking care of myself. I feel like a lot of the time I can become a workaholic and I just don't really give myself time to exercise or eat well or even give myself time to think about these things. I really wanted to carve out wellness and make a way for that in my life. And I feel like I've done a really great job of doing that so far. We're five months in and I don't know, I just feel really good about that. And then my quote of the year, you can only move forward. So if you didn't know this, I am an Enneagram type four, which means I am horribly nostalgic. <laughs> if you're an Enneagram type four, maybe you can relate, but I am constantly looking back and a lot of the time that results in me comparing my current self to my previous self. So with this quote, you can only move forward. That just feels really important to me to remember this year. And especially right now, knowing everything that's happening in the world, we can't change what's already happened. We can only move forward. So for each month so far, I've had a different theme. This one is my least favorite theme. <laughs> this was obviously my first time ever bullet journaling, so I knew that this one wouldn't be perfect. I started out the month by listing out important dates, my goals, and good stuff that happened that month. And as you'll see as I'm going through the progression of this, I didn't use a lot of the space that I created. And I'm not too broken up about it, honestly, because like I said, I'm just getting into this, so I'm still figuring out what I like and what I don't like and what I need and what I don't need. And you will see, in especially in February, I definitely do not need as much space as I gave myself to write out tasks for my daily sections. So February, I decided to draw out my month, and I also decided to draw out a section where I could schedule out my videos for my first channel. And honestly, I ended up not even really using it that much. And then I switch around my videos so often that I didn't even really use this video box either. The page that I used the most was this brain dump, and that is just where I have notes of important things, and then I started off my 
weekly and you can see it's totally empty which is really sad <laughs> i think i realized like the last week of february oh shit i have this thing so then we get into march which is a month that i actually really really enjoyed the setup of this is a little bit more of my style i really like the collective eclectic feel of this old book pages i don't know just something about this it really spoke to me and i really really enjoyed this theme for march However, we didn't do anything in March because quarantine. So my bullet journal fell to the wayside, unfortunately. And I would like to use this theme again later on in the year because I really, really enjoyed it and I didn't feel like I used it at all. So that would be the end. I did not use my notes. I put a nice sticker there to make up for it. And that's it. For May, I decided that I wanted to do another sort of collective, eclectic, scrapbooking feel. So I'm going for a magazine collage theme. I have made a lot of magazine collages in the past. I really, really enjoy this. In fact, <laughs> my childhood bedroom had a huge wall, like an entire wall of my room was filled with magazine cuttings and it was, it was awesome. So while I was looking through the magazine, you probably saw me ripping out certain pages or cutting out certain sayings. I just look for things that pop to me and things that I find interesting and then I will cut out the shape of them for some of them or I will just cut out certain words and then I will go through and trim around the edges, cut out what I found specifically interesting. Something that I really like adding into my collages is a cutout of a person, so either it's their head or their whole body. I really like also cutting out eyes or lips, mouths, what have you. <laughs> I just find that those are really, really striking in collages and you will see me using those a little bit later on when I put together a full collage. For my actual month spread, I wanted to keep it simple and I found this really, really beautiful photo from an editorial shoot and I just loved the way that this desert background looked and I wanted to have a collective look as well with the letters. So I cut out different letters and it was actually very, very difficult finding a Y. I don't even want to tell you how long it took me to find the Y, but I'm going on and I'm painting on Mod Podge on the pages. I did notice that it makes the pages a little bit wrinkly and I don't particularly enjoy that. So in the future, I will probably use a scrapbooking tape or something like that that will just bring a lot less wrinkle. In the past with all my old planners, something that I noticed about myself was the only page that I really used was the big calendar spread. So this month I decided to really listen to myself and make sure that that calendar spread would be the most important part. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it is so difficult to get all of these boxes even. I had so much trouble with it. So I'm using my ruler a lot and I'm also referring back to my previous month's calendar just to make sure that I'm getting it all right. And I still did not get it even. It's As you can see, it's totally not even. But, you know, now that it's finished, it doesn't look that bad. So what I'm doing is I'm first going in with pencil because, like I said, I <laughs> it's not even at all. And then I'm going in with one of my pens to just darken up the lines so that I can't erase them later. But something that happened was every time I slid my ruler, it would leave residue from the previous line. So if anyone has any tips on how to avoid that, I don't know. I do have a dotted journal, but I still get nervous that my lines won't be straight. So I like to have straight lines. So if you have any tips, let me know. One of the bullet journalers that I really enjoy watching, Amanda Rach Lee, uses these white jelly pens and I thought that was so, so cool. So I blackened out the top here and then I'm just writing in the days of the week. The next spread that I needed to work on was my brain dump or my notes page. I found these light bulbs in a Neutrogena spread and I really liked the idea of having light bulbs on my ideas page. But <laughs> after I ended up gluing them down, I kept getting dirty fingerprints all over them and it looked super bad. And then I found another page that I just really enjoyed of some shoes and I made that a sort of header. And then I used some washi tape to just write out the title for the page. 
The next thing that I needed to do was make my weekly spread and since I know that I don't really use these that much I wanted it to be as little work as possible so I have these Rifle Paper Company weekly spreads which I actually used in college a little bit too but a friend recently gave me this pad and I will say later on I noticed that they created a lot of bulk inside of the journal so what I did was cut them in half and tape one side on one page and the other side on the other page so it still uses eight pages but I didn't have to go through the trouble of writing everything out and measuring and all that junk. So hopefully this will be a little bit more practical for my use. The next spread that I wanted to make serves absolutely no purpose in the bullet journaling realm, but it is super, super fun for me to get creative with these. So I ended up making a two page collage spread. Like I said earlier in this video, I do really like to mess around with cutting out mouths and eyes and heads and just things like that and accessories. I lay things out in the way that I want them to look in the end and then I take a photo of it with my phone so that I remember what that looks like and then I kind of take it all apart and then I start gluing everything on with my Mod Podge. Again, I will probably use different kind of adhesive in the future, but something that I always do is I always forget the layers and the which one should go first, which one should go last, and so I end up having to peel up the magazine, which is so annoying. I hate that I always forget and have to do this every time. So if you are going to make one of these in the future, just remember the order in which you laid everything down so that you don't have to peel up your paper. And then for the other side, here's another quick example of me putting together another side. This one I struggled a little bit more with because I wanted to have this big waterfall hug picture in it. So having something really big kind of will make it a lot more difficult for you with making collages. So just keep that in mind if you ever want to make one of these. Maybe the smaller photos, the better. Now the last actual spread in my bullet journal monthly setup is going to be this activity log where I will just write down every time I do something active. This is my first time ever doing this and I think that I will really enjoy it because I really enjoy making lists and checking things off. So I think that, I know it's a really, really small thing, but I think that even just the idea of writing down that I worked out or I did something active will motivate me to do it more often. And if you're a list person, maybe this will help you too. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna see if it works for me. All right, you guys, that would be the end of my May 2020 bullet journal setup. I really hope that you enjoyed walking through this with me. If you have never bullet journaled before, I really suggest you try it out. Bullet journaling can look any way you want it to look. It doesn't have to look like mine. You make it exactly what you want it to be, and I think that is the best part. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and I will see you next week.